Ladies and gentlemen, the former IBC officials have found themselves hooking accusations against two people in this country as far as last general election is concerned. I saw a tweet by Denis Onyango saying that how Fulache Bukati and commissioners successfully employed Kenya Kwanzaa leaders as their PR officials is a course that is yet to be studied in the university. <laughs> you know, and we've had these counter accusations. I want to, I want, and I want to narrow it down to two. This accusation number one, the account, accusation on two people. Number one is Rafael Tuju. That Rafael Tuju wanted, gave, offered them bribes. I don't know what good is for them to alter election results. Number two is National Security Advisory Council that was actually shared, um, that was sent to meet Chibukati in Bomas. And they are accusing that body of telling them to moderate results for the sake of the security of the country. And that has also seen an extensive propaganda charm offensive that people wanted to take someone's life, that the state wanted to take someone's life, and the other one is that militarization of the process. But then they were also, uh, technically the accused is not seen in the picture. These people you are talking about and we're having this discussion that, Kevin, we have a tribunal discussing what's going on. And we've seen election management officials hawking accusations left, right, and sector, center. But the accused are not coming in public to defend themselves. Neither are they even releasing statements to defend themselves or they have not even been called. Yes, the names, every accusation is in media and everywhere. None of them has been charged. They even not called and there's nothing. So it leaves this uh, much of a hearsay. I am wondering why Tuju, Matiangi, Wako and the members of the National Security Council that the Bukati met are yet to be grilled. When, when they swear affidavits even to that tribunal, that tribunal, uh, the, the, the Irina Masip tribunal, is asking them questions and they are responding to those. But no one is looking for those fillers. Now that was the script I want to tell you. The script why the tribunal was formed was to probe Chereras before the clever resigned. And what was there? That the Chereras uh, tribunal was a trap that was sent to make sure, was set to make sure that all those parties are brought in the dock. No, bring that, bring that, bring that, bring that. But cleverly, it collapsed when they resigned. I listened to Chibukati's admission in that tribunal, and he even found himself telling us how Wanderi and Masit could not work together, and he was simply saying that even amongst the Jerora commissioners, there are also disagreements amongst themselves because there was no synergy. Even though, according to me, I look at it as an admission that was this integrated. In fact, this tribunal have invited, it has invited commissioners. We are talking about myself, not any, but all these people we are talking about are talking about 3M meeting with Jirafa, I told you there's another meeting in the North country, but those fellas are not being told brute forth. So do we really mean what we are doing with that tribunal.
Why don't we? I understand that there are invitations for Tuju and a host of some other people, but they collapsed because they declined. In fact, they have an obligation not to. Same as Matengi, same as Chibukate appeared there in his personal capacity, not as former IBC chair, because he had resigned. Even Chereras, <laughs> all of them were needed to appear before. Defend the small person and it collapsed. So, what is going on? The script collapsed when the commission, commissioners were signed. And what is going on is a formality. President, or rather that tribunal, has not brought others into full. I can tell you that the vigor that was when this process started, even at the parliamentary uh, committee, you could see, you know, it had the power in a dinner. Now this is what is it was going to be an inquiry. <laughs> that is why after it collapsed, uh, the chairman in his exit speeches was talking about Boma's inquiry. Simply trying to drag other people's name into it. But Truto would not go that direction. And I will tell you why. There was no plan to get the truth. I can tell you. There was no plan. I've, I've had very ridiculous accusations. Um, it, even if Truto is supposed to give goodies, you want to tell me that that can be said when everyone else is sitting there. And, and if all the commissioners are seated, you want to tell me that the intelligence does not know that these commissioners, four commissioners want to support now they don't support one. So that even if you see it there, it will still come out. You know, I've, I've always, I've, I've, some of those things I don't buy, that, by the way. For me, they look at just fabrications to make sure that the story is standing. So, you know, you know your five Ws of who, where, how, then you, you make sure you can have a full story. But there are some bits that are coming out. And one, I have seen Oscar Sudi only picking now Gola in terms of members of that National Security Advisory, Security Advisory Team. So, even if someone was there, what did he do? Do you just mark, victimize a presence? Okay, National Security Diversity Council is here. They've come here. They're saying this. Before you talk about, uh, do you victimize someone because of presence? Did he shoot? Did you try that? You know. And I want to tell you, Ruto must avoid and is avoiding it was a very delicate uh, uh, move to make sure that he does it and do not drag Uhuru's name into it as much as that's why the, those other fellas that their names are now being defamed here and there about this matter cannot be called because William Ruto would not want to dare drag Uru Kenyatta's name there. I want to tell you why. You know, Uru Kenyatta was a fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. Now, you, can, you can't change that. And as a man who led this country for 10 years, he also has a following. And even in his own backyard of Mount Kenya, where there is some imaginary wave or some sponsored hate messages, you cannot tell me that Uhuru is an outcast there. But Kenyans, what I'm going to tell you, that people will always stand with the oppressed. So Ukim Narau and looks pressed on that angle, you also lose a bit of a support from the population. That's one reason. Two, who has Ruto's top secrets in this country? If not, the left-handed man from Jawedi. <laughs> so forget about it. 
forget about uh, that that could not take that direction because he knows very well that who equally can blow if it is about blowing blow by blow they can and that resurgence would fight lastly who was a former chief of defense forces he can have influence you cannot underrate him and on smooth transitions you will always be told that for smooth transition just make sure you don't um, cross paths with your predecessor remember he had a very good in fact military enjoyed most who can understand he will pick when bad he was picked from military to Nairobi enemies he will pick military and put them to the civil service so and he enjoyed a relationship with them so you don't know to what extent he can yield with influence so that is why even I've seen the discussion about that 7 million package uh, return and benefits. It has to be there. <laughs> I, it's not even negotiable. It has to be there so long as the president Uru Kenyatta is going to be alive. You don't want to. He could not take that path. That's my take, guys. Mm -hmm.